sell your gaming PCs right now because we got the next best thing. This is a new Aya Neo. This is the Geek One S, and these things have been getting more and more powerful to the point where you might consider it a gaming PC replacement. Don't believe us? We're about to test it and show you guys, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Ugreen and their Nexode 65 watt 7 in 1 charging station. With three AC outlets, two USB C, and two USB A ports, Ugreen 65 watt USB C power strip powers up to seven devices at the same time and makes organizing your workstation easier than ever before. Powered by a JN2 chip, the DigiNest Cube USB C charger delivers 65 watts of high speed power. For reference, that can fully charge a 13 inch MacBook Air M2 in less than one and a half hours. With multiple ports and wide compatibility, the Ugreen 65 watt charging station provides fast charging and power to virtually any device or home appliance. The compact three sided design is also suitable for home, office, and travel. If you're interested in fast and efficient charging, check out the link in the description down below for more info or to grab yourself a Ugreen Nexo charging station today. Big thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get right back to it. So we're really excited to check out this Geek One S because we have looked at many Aya Neos now. I almost feel like we've gotten to see them kind of grow as a company. And at first, they didn't really seem like they had the greatest price to performance when you had something like the Steam Deck that just hit the market. But now we're talking Asus ROG Ally level performance and looks. And we're matching the Asus ROG Ally price point. But the real question is, should you get this? over the Asus ROG Ally? Now, one thing to keep in mind is we have actually had Zach, who does all of our graphic design, kind of look at this thing and basically kind of do like a, a little bit of like a pre-screening, pre-download games, pre-testing even, because it's funny, Zach actually wants to get this <laughs> once we're done with the video, just to show how much um, we really like these things so far. I know Matt has, uh, what, two or three of them I have now? two or three of them, and yeah. they have made a lot of versions. That's what I and Neo, they've done a lot of like versions within like a few months of each other, and they're always trying to make the latest and greatest option out there. So this is something that they've always done that's really cool. Their packaging has just always been like really premium. I know at one point we've even gotten gloves yes. with, the, with the unboxings. So in here, um, you usually get like a couple different types of like power bricks and stuff like that. Sometimes like a stand or two. God, it's a it's big a power big, brick. Well, it's cool. It has like a real gamers, no gamers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I also like this. We actually get a USB-C and a USB uh, type A 3.0. Which I really and like about this. these is I, every time I've taken these things on the go, the charger is always doubled as like my phone charger. Like it's very, very powerful. Well, 100 watt, 100 yes. watt fast charger. Kind of reminds me of like Ugreen almost. It's yes. almost like a standalone charger, very fancy. Looks like we probably got a power cord. Oh no. Adapters. Okay, this is exactly what I was thinking they might have, but I didn't know if they would. We actually get different adapters for different countries. I do like now that it looks like heck, I mean almost standard you get the the US adapter yes. um, just because you know for us it's a little easier than having to put an adapter on it looks like we get a USB C to USB 3 a little adhesive they almost look like they're like uh, so I think these like you can actually upgrade this thing pretty easily you mm -hmm. take the shell apart but there is adhesive around here so when you take the shell off you might need to reapply the adhesive so I think that's why they include that oh, for when okay. you upgrade it looks a lot Are like those these. the covers yeah, I it remember is. it may yeah. be the same thing with this model. There are some models where like when you actually take it apart, those pieces actually like break, break off. off. So you actually need sense. to replace them. So it's good, good that they them. give it to you. Yeah, good on them. That's that's awesome. We even get this, which I, I'm assuming is to get the bezel apart. Yeah, like so they nice basically give you every tool you need to take yeah. this thing apart, which is really cool. They trust their end users, which I love. USB-C to C cable, so you can use that fast charging technology. But in this video, again, as we mentioned at the beginning, a tease at the beginning, we really want to see, is this thing a good PC replacement? I actually made a video on the last IO Neo 2, where I replaced my PC at home with it for several months, and using their dock, it worked out really well, but now that we have a Ryzen 7 7840U and RDNA 3 graphics, mm -hmm. this thing should be to the next level of a PC replacement. Let's just go over some of the features. So we get double joysticks that you can press in. We have the standard, really Xbox style layout. We have a couple of buttons on the side here. We have like some menu buttons. We have a D-pad. On the back, we get very, very nice triggers. We also get some bumpers. It looks like we have a... So those are programmable. Normally, out of the box, it's for like popping up the keyboard and Windows okay. because this is a Windows-based device and keyboards and Windows can be kind of finicky, especially touchscreen ones. Power button, yep. which I just discovered. With fingerprint reader. Yeah, and then we have a uh, volume rocker. We have two USB-Cs. I'm assuming that they can either be used for charging. <laughs> we have Zachary Stevenson. <laughs> Look at that. Shout out, Zachary. Yeah, that's like a mug shot. It's awesome. And then uh, it looks like on the other side here, we get a, I assume, a combo headphone jack. This is interesting. This is a micro SD card reader that 
kind of pops out in a cool way. And then another USB-C. And since none of them are labeled, I'd assume they could all be used for charging. Every single one can be used for charging and they do Super include cool. this USB-C to two adapter, um, which is very useful, especially if you're gonna like install a bunch of stuff on these things. Like you wanna plug up a keyboard and mouse initially. Uh, but if you do get a dock, any sort of USB-C dock, you can <laughs> easily use that um, to make this a PC replacement. I don't know his pin, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's fun doing this. Um, sh should we guess it? He said, ignore the stuff on the desktop because a lot of it is he accidentally signed into his Microsoft account oh, and yeah. it's an auto synced it, but when you delete it, it just keeps coming back. So <laughs> shout out Microsoft. Yeah, look at all of his. We got thumbnails and look at that. He works, guys. This is awesome. I know he's been playing Rocket League on this and he's been actually really enjoying it. We already have Afterburner. So it's so weird. Like, this is a desktop. They it's a full desktop. desktop in the palm of your hands. I will say for AAA titles, we haven't tested it yet. It's normally better to run at lower resolution because you get better battery life and better performance with these things because they still are APUs, but they've come a long way being able to play AAA titles at at least 60 FPS on lower settings. I think it's time that we go ahead and uh, test some games on this thing because I'm excited. Let's do it. All right, guys, we are now testing the Ultimate Spider-Man Game of the Year Edition on this I and Neo. And these are the settings we are currently running. We are currently at 1280 by 800. And we also have very low settings with AMD FSR 2.1 on. This is a game that I think makes a lot of sense for something like a portable game console, like a Steam Deck or an Aya Neo, because it's a fun title that's normally only on PlayStation or PC, but it has really good game controls. Um, it's a kind of game that you primarily play with controller, which I think is a key point to mention is that if you are gonna play games on this, primarily only play games that are on controller unless you're going to dock this thing because it just has a lot of issues working with games that aren't native controller uh, design. So keep that in mind if you are going with this device and we're getting 60 FPS, which I think is more than playable. And on this size of a display, 1280 by 800 does not look bad at all. And it actually looks pretty sharp using FSR. FSR 2.1 is what we're using right now, actually, and it's auto adjusting for 60 FPS. So theoretically, it could go higher with the FPS numbers, but we're trying to target 60 the best we can and keep our visual quality at the same time. But things are looking really nice. I'll go and up the speakers here in just a second. Let me actually pause and up the speakers so you guys can hear this a little better. I will say this device compared to my Aya Neo 2 is significantly quieter. We are on the 22 watt game profile. Um, there are other options you can go with if you are playing plugged in. I think you can go up to like 30 or 32 watts. Um, being able to do that would make this a much better docking system, which we will do some docking testing, don't worry. Um, we'll show you guys how it works with the keyboard and mouse and everything on a monitor. Um, but yeah, for on the go, 22 watts would be ideal for these AAA titles, um, especially if you are, oh goodness, I almost died especially if you're playing a game like Spider-Man, getting 22 watts is gonna be essential if you're gonna to wanna to maintain good FPS numbers. There are definitely some points where we are dipping into the 40s and 50s, but again, on this device using controller, as long as we're not jarringly dipping down to like the 30s and 20s, I think it's more than playable and is a really nice experience. And again, it's not running too hot. Just for the sake of showing you guys, I will go to the balance profile, which again, with Aya Neos, you hit this little Aya button, it pulls up Aya space. It'll drop the wattage down. And as you can see, 15 watts, not enough. It's definitely gonna be a stuttery experience, but if you wanna save a load of battery, you could do it, but I have a feeling when we're gonna be swinging around here, we're definitely gonna drop down into the 20 and 30 range, but it's actually holding pretty well. If you wanna get 60 though, definitely go up to that 22 watt option. And as you can see, once we actually stop swinging around and generating everything, we're having a much smoother experience overall. But yeah, guys, Spider-Man, more than playable on this device, 60 FPS. As someone who's played through this campaign, I would have no problems replaying it on this device, if I'm being honest. Runs very, very smooth, very, very happy with the performance. Let's try some other more demanding games and then also some Rocket League because I think Rocket League is a really good device for this. As long as you have a good Wi-Fi connection, you can play competitive Rocket League with this setup and we'll let Jackson give that a shot. Here we go with Rocket League. Oh no, I'm already so bad on this thing. Yeah, so I've, I've never like used a handheld before besides a Nintendo DS. That's the last handheld I really use. So for me, this is definitely like a big learning curve. These are performing significantly better than some of the other devices. I mean, there's some that we have to go really low settings. This is high settings, FPS, yeah. native FPS. So if we're around Wi-Fi too, you might be dealing yeah. with some latency here. Yeah, our Wi-Fi is not the greatest here. So no fault to the I and Neo for that one. Does he block it? Oh, oh, oh this is you, this is you. Dude, I, I went go. gentle because I really didn't want to mess that up. 
I think that guy, we might just be on a bad server. This one's a lot quieter than other devices. Like it's not nearly as like ramping up loud. I said one more Ooh. hit, one more hit. Oh, oh you made a forfeit. forfeit, let's go. Look at that, you got an achievement for that. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, that was Rocket League guys, I mean. 150 FPS. Yeah, it's definitely a learning curve for me, but like, just because I'm used to playing with a controller more like this. So, you know, being a little more wide out, it's a little weird, but honestly, I mean, I won my very first game. He so. won, so that means it has to be good. Yeah. All right, guys, now that we use the Aya Neo in its portable state, we're gonna show you how this thing can actually be a PC replacement using the Aya Neo Multistation, which you can buy from Aya Neo directly, or you could just get a traditional USB-C hub that has all these ports out. But as you can see, we're easily able to dock our Aya Neo, which just works with multiple Aya Neo devices, or really any handheld device that uses USB type C, and we're able to run power to the device, run two USB ports out, so a keyboard and mouse, be able to charge a device, which is actually backwards. This is power to the device. This is actually able to charge something else out of the device or just run USB-C. You could run a USB-C to USB-2 adapter here to get even more USB ports. Then we have a HDMI out, which is very important for us to run that monitor setup and ethernet to get faster internet speeds. So really this is a all around great setup because you can take this thing on the go. Then all you have to do is, well, come home at the end of a work day. Be like, oh, I was using my INEO at work and then I'm just going to dock it and I wanna play games like Apex Legends that require keyboard and mouse, but now it's on the dock, it'll be able to hook up directly to the um, monitor that you have over here and have a great portable setup. I actually did this myself with my INE at home and it was a really good experience overall, especially with how powerful this thing is with an eight core 16 threaded processor. But we're not gonna waste any more time, we're gonna go ahead and test this thing in Apex Legends, which again is a much more keyboard and mouse friendly game. And then from there, we're gonna wrap this video up and talk about the value proposition of this INE Neo, because again, these things are getting a lot cheaper and are much more competitive with the mainstream options on the market. All right, guys, we are now in dock mode with the Aya Neo Geek 1S, and we're at 1080p, pretty much low settings across the board. Um, we are running at the 33 watt TDP mode, which is a mode that I would not suggest you do during handheld gameplay because the battery life will be significantly less, but when you're docked, it doesn't really matter. You are plugged up and you're good to go, and we're getting about 60 to 70 FPS on the uh, probably most demanding mode in Apex Legends, Control, which is a big open map. Is it incredibly playable? I think it's more than playable. Um, if you were building a $700 gaming PC versus this device, it, there's no competition. The gaming PC is gonna be significantly better, but when you factor in the portability of this device and you compare it to something like, oh, I don't know, a gaming laptop, yeah, there might be some gaming laptops that'll outperform it, but you don't get the portability and the handheld ability like this device does. So if you are someone who really values a handheld and just don't wanna spend the extra money on a gaming PC right away and wanna get a handheld first, maybe this is a good option for you. But yeah, these RDNA 3 graphics are a decent amount better uh, versus um, the 680M. With the 7840U, we're definitely getting an uptick in performance. And I know with my Aya Neo 2, it could play games like Overwatch, 60 plus FPS, when you were in docked mode running 33 watts. If you're somebody who's gonna get this device, I really would be interested mainly in single player titles, especially if you wanna take like full-fledged single player PC games on the go, and then be able to dock and get a little bit more performance with keyboard and mouse, um, but it, take, it takes a specific person to want a portable handheld. They're really cool on paper, but in the long run, you gotta know whether or not it's something you wanna get, and I know a lot of people get them as complementary devices. Um, I, I really think still, even though it's getting a lot closer to being a PC replacement, I think these things are still much more a, hey, this is a good thing in addition to your PC versus something that can actually fully replace a PC for some people. There are people who can replace it for. I think, I think college students could benefit from it, um, but yeah, there, there are definitely a, a, a decent amount of people where this wouldn't be a good full PC replacement just yet. But yeah, Apex Legends, I would say it runs fine if you're looking for a 60 FPS experience just to play Apex Legends on this device works perfectly good. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is wrap this video up real quick and just kind of talk about this device and how it compares, because again, the Asus ROG Ally is similar in price and it's from a name brand, Asus. Um, a lot of people who are new to the handheld space may not know how established Aya Neo is really, um, even though they've been doing this for a very long time, um, but it is still good to see that Aya is competing with the big dogs in the um, price to performance category because for a while there, their devices were ridiculous 
ridiculously expensive compared uh, to the counterparts on the market like the Steam Deck. But now that Asus is releasing a device that, yeah, has a higher refresh rate display and all that, but still competes very closely performance-wise, it's still cool to see that there's a lot more competition in this space and a lot more options for consumers. So once I die here, I think we're gonna go ahead and switch it. Can I push? Oh yes, you're up. All right, I'm dead. All right guys, we just got done doing a typical but not so typical benchmark on this IDEO Geek 1S. And honestly, the biggest takeaway from this device is that they have come such a long way. If you look at when we first started reviewing this just a little over a year ago, the price and the performance have both dramatically changed. It's really cool to see IDEO getting more competitive with the price point, especially with ROG releasing their Ally and the Steam Deck being, well, the Steam Deck, a really good price performance device. It's cool to see the price is coming down on this. So if you want to take a look at this and cash in on the current discount that they're running for their Kickstarter campaign. Check the link in the description down below and let us know what you think of this device. Would you use it as a PC replacement? I've used it before and I was actually very impressed, especially if you get the dock. It works very well as a laptop slash PC replacement that can be great for gaming on the go. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's little video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Now every so often we do have stuff like this for sale at PCBros.tech, but today we're going to tell you guys about actual gaming PCs if you want to pick up a full-size computer that you can hook up dual monitors to and get an awesome setup. PCBros.tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code TOASTBROS2 on checkout, you'll save 2% on your next purchase, and you can buy a build mat or a mouse pad today. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.